I'll put a link to this lady's uh, blog. Uh, this will train you about your constitution because I know you people do not pick it up and read it. That's a bad thing in the United States. <sighs> this is kind of cute here. I mean, this is, this is how stupid things are, how people are in the United States. It says, those pushing for the so-called convention of states say we must amend the Constitution because the people in Washington don't understand it. And she said rubbish. Hang on there. Okay. Our Constitution is so simple that Alexander Hamilton expected us to be enlightened enough to distinguish between a legal exercise and an illegal assertion of authority. He said that people are the natural guardians of the Constitution. So, if the Constitution is something that people are expected to know and enforce, is it plausible to assert that the representatives we send to Washington and even the Supreme Court justices are incapable of understanding it? Justice of the Supreme Court have been perverting our Constitution for a long time. They do this because they are so stupid they don't understand our Constitution. They violate the Constitution because they claim the right to impose their own personal views on us. Let that sink in. They violate our Constitution because they claim the right to impose their own personal views upon the rest of us. As every American over the age of 10 should know, the powers of our federal government, federal constitution, delegates to Congress and to the president, and they are very limited and defined. They are called enumerated. So the progressives in the Supreme Court had to find a way to get around the limitations imposed on them by the enumerated powers. And they did this by perverting three clauses, the Interstate Commerce Clause, the General Welfare, in a necessary and proper clause. So, if you want to look at the Federalist Papers, it shows the original intent. I mean, this is something you got to do. If you're going to research these people, you've got to go read the Federalist Papers. And then I'm going to hear people, well, I don't understand. Good God. That's why this country's in trouble. Interstate Commerce Clause. Webster's Dictionary of 1828 says commerce is the buying and selling of goods. And this, all this was, now if you look in Federalist number 22 and Federalist number 42, the ninth and the tenth paragraphs, Hamilton and, yeah, Hamilton and Madison explained the primary purpose of the clause to prohibit the states from imposing taxes and tariffs on merchandise as it's transported through the states for the purpose of buying and selling. General Welfare Clause. Exemption from any unusual evil or, evil or calamity, the enjoyment of peace and prosperity, or, or the ordinary blessings of society and civil government applies to the state. It has nothing to do with handouts, public relief, or the feds doing whatever they think is a good idea. Yep, our framers understood the, the Welfare Clause. It's the enjoyment of peace and prosperity and the enjoyment of the ordinary blessings of society and civil government. And it's only possible when you have a federal government of strictly limited powers. Necessary and proper. Oh, good. That's something. So this clause only permits the powers to be used, the execution of powers already that are delegated and enumerated in the Constitution. No additional substantial powers are granted to the clause. They only have the powers that were delegated to them, which were granted to them by our Constitution. They can't add things like, well, we're going to do gun rights. You can't. It's not in there. It's not enumerated. 
But there is a thing in there called the preamble to the Bill of Rights. Ooh, who's that? Well, the conventions of the number of the states having at the time of their adopting the Constitution expressed a desire in order to prevent misconstruction or abuse of its powers that further declaratory and restrictive clauses should be added. That way you could trust the government better. Like I said, a well-regulated militia, Article 2, or Amendment 2, well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And like I said, there's no subparagraphs A, B, C, or D what, which would stipulate what an acceptable infringement would be. Therefore, there are none. That means that Congress and all the, all the other executive branches they are constitutionally barred from infringing upon your right to keep and bear arms. Period. Look it up. It's right there. And this was added to uh, the Constitution before it was ratified and preserved. When they did ratify it, they preserved for every American citizen the right to keep and bear arms, and the government cannot stick their damn noses in it. But I want you to know about these three clauses. That's the ones that they keep using. And like I said, they perverted the Constitution. So progressives of the Supreme Court had to find a way around the limitations imposed by the enumerated powers. And they did it by perverting the three clauses. The international or the interstate commerce, general welfare, and necessary and proper clause. Now you got to remember, when this was written, it was only commerce. It was not interstate commerce. They changed that to give themselves more power. They keep changing a lot of things and twist and turn to give themselves more power. They don't have that power. It's, if it's not listed in your enumerated powers. You don't have any rights. Not the Congress. They keep perverting the Constitution. And like I said, even a tenure, I can remember it was George Washington. And he said, you know, this is so good. He says, even, even a ten-year-old kid could understand it. Well, here we got all these people who don't even have a Constitution at home. They've never even picked up a Constitution. I ordered 5,000 pocket constitutions and pass them out to people. I think I got two, maybe three left. Do they read it? Hell no, I found some in the doggone trash, trash cans at, at work. Oh yeah. A constitution is something that people are expected to know and enforce. Period. People are the natural guardians of the constitution. Okay, now you guys know what the, the what the, um, The three uh, bad things are these people try to change the original intent of these clauses. That's the problem. Interstate commerce, like I said, it's only to, to stop the states back in from imposing taxes and tolls that pass through their country, pass through their state. Because, you know, there were crooked politicians back then who would, oh, we got to tax that as it goes through. General Welfare Clause, and I've told you what that is. The Necessary and Proper Clause. Like I said, everybody goes, Oh, the Necessary and Proper, they can make any bill they want. No, they can't. They are limited. Look at Federalist Number 29. If the power isn't listed, people, they don't have that power. Okay, enough of that. I'll put a link. I'll put a link down there. Go read it, because your damn politicians aren't. <laughs>